Come in, if you dare. Welcome to a world of the fantastic and the macabre. Welcome to Ghost Stories YYC. Prepare yourself for a tale of terror. Written by Ashley Gray, with art by Jamie Gray. Prairie Reliquary Pack a suitcase, John says. You can only bring what fits, he says. So, of course, I dig up the bones. But shh, it's a secret. Don't be difficult, Agnes, John pleads. You know we can't afford another mouth to feed. I read the box once more. Try Dr. Lovingheart's pills. They've been proven to cure any complaint, the red label promises. Sick stomach? Fever? Women's troubles? Irregularities or obstructions of your system? Dr. Lovingheart will cure them all. Miscarriage appears on an equally long list of possible side effects. At least you didn't marry the kind of husband who would push you down the cellar stairs. What's that? Our youngest points across the dinner table as I gulp down the first pink pill with milk. Mommy's medicine, John answers before I can. For tummy troubles. I start to notice a rattle in my dress pocket as I wash the dinner plates. Remove. Obstruction. Cure. Complaint. The pills rattle in my pocket while I milk the cow. They rattle from the drawer while I sleep. They rattle from the house while we're all out plowing the fields. I stop the rattling when they sow the barley seeds. I open the noisy box and disseminate the pills with the crop. When my belly blossoms, I know I've won. But I still cry silent tears and pick up chipped white paint off the kitchen window while John and the boys leave for the day's chores. John won't let me help in my condition. He buys me knitting needles to pass the time. I try to knit baby shoes. But my tension's off, and I keep unraveling the yarn into a curly red mess on the bedsheets. I'm only months in when the boys watch me double over in pain. The bread I was removing from the oven thuds on a cracked linoleum. I groan and squeeze my eyes shut. It's too soon. Luke, run and get the neighbor's wife, John commands, and turns to the younger two. Boys, get your mom to bed. He fills a kettle. Don't worry, Mama, says Benji. We help Papa with the calf, remember? I pat his head and then collapse. I hear pacing steps and whispers I can't understand. I open my eyes to Mrs. Novak, alternately wringing her hands and folding them in prayer. She sees me awake and avert her eyes, crow's feet turned down. She shakes her gray head. She whispers a check phrase to the floor. Suddenly, her heavy arms and rough hands wrap around my shoulders. She sobs against my cheek, her tears flowing where mine should be. But I am frozen. Mrs. Novak releases me, only to bring the tiny fetus to my arms. I look down at the almost baby. Little one, I kiss her bald head. I'm so sorry. It's all your fault. You shouldn't have taken that pill. I press the baby to my now heaving chest, wishing I could warm her frigid limbs with my hot tears. I cry until I am dry and empty, a cracked egg. You know what you must do. Don't look for John. Don't call the boys. Go to the barn. Bring the spade. Dig a shallow grave outside the fallow field. Tuck her in with dirt. Stamp down the soil. Whisper a prayer for salvation. Hers, and one for forgiveness. Yours. Mark the grave. John can't find her. He doesn't want her. A pebble will do. John wipes tears from my face with dirt and crusted hands. He embraces me. I am enveloped in his smell of hay and soil. Little one visits my dreams. Hello, Hello mommy. mommy, she giggles, three years old now. Look Hello, at my dolly. Mommy. She holds out her stillborn corpse, gray and bald. I reach out, but she skips away. I jolt awake, panting. You know what you must do. Bring a moonlight offering to the secret grave. Luke's old stuffed lamb will do. The lamb browns and flakes in the weather. She smells of mildew. Pack a suitcase, John says. You can only bring what fits, he says. So, of course, I dig up the bones. But shh, it's a secret. Pack the knitting needles. 
Pack your once white baptismal dress. Pack the Bible. Pack the black and white aunts and cousins. They will watch over her. Travel to the field. Break up the dirt with the needles. Scoop out soil and bone in your palms. Wrap little one's bones in the dress. Tie the sleeves. Make a bundle. John never checks the suitcase's contents. I watch him attach the tag. Agnes M., number 35769, Pinoca Provincial Mental Hospital. He ships me and my baggage off on a train. Neither of us looks back. <laughs>